Hey, welcome back here to the Central PA Poor. And if you look to my left, Mr. Kevin is back in the house again. And howdy, howdy. You just were traveling again, weren't you? North of South Carolina. South Carolina. It's been nice here since he was in, in uh, where is it, South Carolina? I, apparently, you don't really care, so why do you want me to answer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's been hot as we're recording this. It yes. has been extremely hot here in the summer in Dover, PA. So um, I don't know where it was like in South Carolina, but it was hot here in Dover. Yes. Um, we got a lot going on. Don't make sure you check us out on our subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we got a merch site going on. We do. So make sure you go to our link tree at Central PA Poor and check out our merch site. You can also get to us on our social media platforms from there and wherever you get your podcasts. So you can make sure you give us a like, subscribe, because that helps us keep yeah. going and uh, giving you guys good content. Dave, anything going on with you? No, nothing really. No, it's been a dull really. week. Dull week. Yeah. <laughs> You're retired. Every week's dull, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have nothing to do. I just get up at, at 9, 30, 10 o'clock and go to bed at uh, 7 you know, in the evening, and I have nothing to do. I don't know about that. <laughs> Isn't that what old folks do? They go to bed early, get up late? Yeah. I always thought they were like vampires, because you'd be going to bed, and he'd get out and do some lawn work at like 11 at night. It's like, what the hell are they doing? That's why there's lights on the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just hopefully you don't have no garlic hanging from there, right? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. We do. We got us some more guests sitting in front of us, and I have been after these guys for a little bit, uh, and we are very happy to very happy. finally connect with them and get them in studios. So welcome to the Central PA Poor. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All right. Tell us who you are and who you're with. Uh, so um, Jason. I'm Ryan. Uh, we're with Aldous Brewing Company out of Hanover, Pennsylvania. All right. Aldous Brewing. Now, you guys have been around for a little bit now. You've been around yeah. for quite some time. We have. Going on uh, nine years this October. Nine nice. years. So were you one of the first ones in Hanover? I think Warehouse Gourmet was the first, like, micro pub uh, in, in Hanover. Yeah, and then we would have been the second. So Warehouse, was that the one on the square at one time, or was that somewhere else? They're off the square. Uh, that's, what was it, High well, Street in Washington? Okay. Yeah, they're right off uh, on the other side of the railroad tracks um, if you go down High Street. Okay. Yep. But, yeah, you guys have been around for some time, so... Where did where does the name Audis come from? You want to take this one? <laughs> I guess so. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the name Aldous, uh it's no one's last name. Uh, I am. I went to school for graphic design and advertising, and a um, bit of a history nerd, a bit of a topography nerd, which is the study of type and how it reads. And um, so we were trying to find a name that meant something. And one day I was going through some of my old books looking for inspiration and I came across Aldous Minutius. So Aldous was the uh, pretty pretty prolific guy. If you, if you look back, he's uh, he standardized the use of the semicolon. Pretty mind-blowing. I'm kidding. Uh, created the italic font. Uh, but his biggest claim to fame is he's considered to be the father of the modern paperback. So in the, oh. in the 16th century, even though... The printing press had been created way in the beginning of the 16th century. People still didn't have access to literature. And uh, Aldous found a way to print literature um, cheaply by, when he created the italic font, uh, using italics you can fit more words per line, thereby reducing the amount of lines necessary to fill a page, thereby reducing the amount of uh, pages necessary for the book. Sure. He also found a way to print on cheap vellum. So... You're probably wondering what the hell that has to do with craft beer, right? It, I, I, dude, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the story. I truly am. This is awesome. So he brought literature to the masses. That was his, that was specifically, it was Greek literature, uh, unabridged, and he just wanted, he thought everyone should have access to literature. Um, we looked at that and said, well, we kind of want to do that with craft beer. We want to bring craft beer to the masses. Um, now, not that we're the first people to think about doing this, but it's the way we try to do it, which is, by making the recipes accessible, making sure that we're really fine-tuning things um, and not, not jumping the gun and being too knee-jerk with our processes. Um, so uh, in that, um, his, his motto is make haste slowly. Um, and that's something that we, uh, we hold tried and true at the brewery. Uh, we don't rush things. 
if a beer takes six months to finish, it's going to take six months to finish. I agree with that. These uh, All of our sours, they'll age for a year plus, and they do not touch a bottle until they are done. Oh, wow. Um, and so the other thing is uh, in, in pricing, we really try to make sure that we're using all the same ingredients as every other craft brewery out there, but we really try to make sure um, the beer from a budget standpoint is reasonable. And not that we sell ourselves short, but we're not going to charge $15 for a, you know, a, 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 a bottle of beer. I mean, we really try to make sure it's reasonably priced because it's about access. We don't want to scare people off. I was going to mention that. I, that's noticeable. Yeah. So, yeah. but so essentially, that's that's where the name came from, um, and he's our, our patron saint, Aldous Manoush. <laughs> he's on our van. If you ever see us driving, he's I did. The- <laughs> I was, and that's why I asked that question because I've seen the the picture, and I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm a history buff, but certain history, I wouldn't have never known that. So we just got a nice history lesson. Yeah, that's absolutely. awesome, man. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we try try to bring some education to the drinking session. You know, <laughs> and and I think that's what we found um, with every guest we've had. There's a unique story with how you got started, where the name comes from, and that, and and everybody's unique. And I think it's awesome. It's a great thing. So what brought you two together? And how did you, is this something you both had a dream of, or whose dream was it first, then followed suit? Yeah, so uh, we actually met at a newspaper in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Paperback? (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's called the Daily Local News. It's, they still publish it, I think. Um, But I was in IT, and Jason worked in a graphic design department. And honestly, my office just was, because it was the only one available, attached to the production department. I had nothing to do with them. Um... But we just, uh, so his boss, so I, I, I was doing some home brewing kind of in college, you know, kits and stuff and cheaper. Yeah. You know, dump this in there, dump that in there and let it sit in the closet for a week. And I guess it turned out okay. Um, <laughs> in college, you're not going to care what it tastes yeah, exactly, like. Right? <laughs> it's alcohol. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, uh, his boss who I had worked with, so I'd been to the paper for three, four years by then. Um, he was. I had to work with him too. So he was into homebrew. He's the first guy I ever met that did all grain uh, homebrewing. So Jason and I just started hanging out. The whole group back there were pretty close, and I kind of got sucked into it just because of where, where I was. In, you were in our orbit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we just started. The first thing we really started doing was cooking together. Um, the uh, paper was a sponsor of the local chili cook off, and they, they, we got an entry. And so they came back and asked Jason. Jason asked me if I wanted to join him and help him do some stuff out. Uh, and then that's how we started. We started cooking, and then he started brewing with this guy, Carl. Um, the infamous Carl. And then we just started brewing together at his house, and he came up with a crazy idea to make it a business. All right. <laughs> so uh, you started with kits. Did you do kits, or did you go like what well, we've had some of our people say? They went right all in. We, uh, Ryan, oh, no, actually the first batch I ever brewed with Carl uh, was all grain. I don't think there was any malt extract or, or DME. It was all, uh, it was all grain. Ryan and I did a couple kits to test styles when we were start first developing our recipes, just to kind of make sure we were on on pace. But then that died off pretty quickly. Yeah, I think we did two? maybe, like and they were partial grain. It was uh, malt extract and then uh, grain as well. So nothing was all. All uh, extract. Yeah, and that, I think that's, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did um, you uh, did you bring your chili cook off to the Hanover Festival? So we've made it twice. So we we, we can we can never do <laughs> going back to the oldest thing, but then talking about um, we can never do anything easy. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the recipe that we came up with was a buffalo chicken chili. Okay. So we wanted chili that tasted like buffalo chicken wings, um, and just like we do now it took us three four batches to kind of tune it in originally Uh um yeah so we serve it periodically at the brew pub and we've served it at the chili cook off twice yeah twice twice um it's it's one thing making chili in your house and then there's one thing making 30 gallons of it for an event (laughs) yeah it's a lot (laughs) in in the summer serving chili but um, i never understood that but yeah yeah the one in westchester was held the second week of october like all right that makes sense (laughs) yeah because then you you know when you do it during the summer you're doing the chili but make sure you have your beer there so they can get to wash it down (laughs) right well that's the good thing you can always get all this chili at the hanover uh 
chili cook off. So. And that was that wasn't All that long ago, ago wasn't it? No, just a couple weeks, I think. No, it's coming up. Yeah, it's Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Oh, Labor Day mm-hmm. weekend. Okay, there, but there was something up in Hanover in, in downtown. It was a Pride Fest yesterday. <laughs> oh no, thank you. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> no, no, no. There was, I don't know no. if there was chili there. Uh, the, the Snack Town. Snack Town. That's um, what it was. It used to be called Dutch Days. It's now called the go. Snack Town yep. Street Festival. That's what yep. it was. That's yep. what it was. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, we we can get to that, but we're. Because of our location, we're like a block and a half away from yep. downtown. We don't get super involved in that, but that is soon to change. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, we're moving our brew pub to the square. Um, oh, where? Wow. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be um, right essentially adjacent to uh, the hotel. I don't know if you're familiar with where the hotel yep. is on the square. Over, yep. So we'll be, we'll be connected to the hotel. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So that's going to put a bunch of you guys in, yep. that, in that little vicinity of, of Hanover. Yep. That's the, the hope is, um, you know, by being able to draw more people in, um, you know, I, I know our, our buddies at Something Wicked, you know, I, I, I'm sure they, I hope they see it as a, as a positive, but a lot of the complaints that we get from customers, oh, it stinks that you guys aren't on the square. It sucks because, you know, I want to go to all these places, but I got to get my car and drive down here or I got to start here and then drive down, down to the square. So, you know, the idea is you create, I mean, we're essentially a, a we're making our own, you know, uh, uh, Tiny Asheville. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> four or five places to go to yeah. and spend your evening and, you know, I mean, park, park, yeah, don't yeah. get in the car. Park once. You can, I mean, no one brewery is not more than two minutes away from well, the next and one. You got, you know, you got Son of a Horse, which was used to be the second to Faraday's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Fat Bat around the corner and the other around the other corner is something wicked. Yep. If you guys come in, you're within We're that one block, street, yeah. right across the street. So I, that's an awesome because, A, finding parking in downtown Hanover is a little hard to get. <laughs> but when you do get to park, you want to stay there and you exactly. walk around. So that's that's a, that's a great idea. We will have parking out back. <laughs> so that's- Now, will you, will you keep the tap room where you're currently at, or are you going to have just you moving the tap room and keeping the production where it's at? Yeah, we're going to cannibalize the, the current brew pub. Um, we just... We kind of hit. We literally ran up against a wall. We are. Okay. <laughs> we can't fit anything else in the current brewing space. So, the idea is we'll move this. We'll gut the the brew pub and probably the the right now we're toying with the idea of moving um, packaging over to that side um, to kind of give everyone a little more elbow room. Yeah, I know you guys do. You do do distribution. We'll get into that. Um, so when you you guys were cooking together, chili, nothing else. <laughs> Uh, it started as chili. <laughs> I just want to make sure we say it's chili. Yes. Oh, I got you. Yes. yes. <laughs> and not cooking yes, something we were else. Cooking other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys were brewing together. And whose idea was it to start a brewery? Because that's a big commitment. So Ryan and I had always kind of we would sit around the you know waiting for the boil as we all do. You, you got that those couple hours. What are you going to do? You drink and you bullshit, right? So <laughs> we'd always wax poetic. Oh man, would it be awesome if we open a brewery one day? Well. Uh, as the story goes, um, I was living in Baltimore at the time, and uh, I don't know if you've ever driven around Baltimore, but you do that for nine years, and put it this way, I had more hair when, when I moved into Baltimore <laughs> than I did when I left, uh, and it just the commute around that city was just hellacious, and one day I came home, and I was just pissed. I'd been in traffic for three hours, I Just and my, my wife looked at me, and she went, okay, you're obviously miserable. What's your next move? Like, right. wh- what, what are you doing next? Because uh, she's the sweetest pie. She's like, I'm going to kill you if, if you don't figure <laughs> something out. So I was pissed off. I said, I want to make beer for a living. She said, fine, do something else because this isn't working. <laughs> ah, and so I'm like, okay, you can't take that back. I called Brian. Uh, Ryan, uh, Brian <laughs> called Ryan. I'm like, let's open a brewery. He's like, you're crazy. He's like, all right, get it started. And so that's exactly what I did. I got cracking on it. We went to uh, the brewers conference out in San Diego, started mapping out the, the brewery, um, looking at equipment, um, trying to figure out what the hell we were doing and uh, started final paperwork. And I, I'd, I'd been open for about a couple months. Yeah. I mean, I was there, you opened October, the I was there by April. June. Yeah, was, yeah. So, like, as soon as I got it open, Brian's like, "All right, I'm I'm ready to go." So, yeah, that's, <laughs> I avoided all the hard stuff. I got paperwork set up. Uh, you do that, and I'll come along. That's just what I was gonna ask. I mean, he let you take all the legwork. <laughs> I'll just follow, I'll just grab the coattail and come along. <laughs> that's right. Cause he I, says I, a lot of stuff, so I didn't believe it was actually going to happen. <laughs> so that's okay because I make him do all the paperwork now. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's all right. No one avoids it. Well, I think that's a, it's awesome, that, and and you guys have succeeded and and been around now for quite some time. Uh, but speaking of beer, 
Um, we got one sitting in front of us. What is going to be our first one? I'll take this one. Yeah. So um, we we make the very approachable beers, the, the beers that everyone can enjoy, but we also work at a brewery, so we got to have fun with different stuff and things. So almost from the beginning, um, we'll get to the one beer later, but the red rye has always been a, a staple of ours. So it's a barrel aged rye ale. So after you age it, you have barrels that you got to either do something with or get rid of. So we've uh, moved that into a true old world sour program. So we put clean beers, you know, not you know, traditionally brewed and fermented into the barrels. And then we add wilds and fruit, um, almost fruit exclusively. Sometimes we'll do a little things here and there, but then you just kind of put them to the side and they sit there for eight, 12, 16 months, you know, it doesn't matter until it's ready. And that's what Jason was talking about. Sours, you can't rush them. You got to um, put them in there and let them ready. So well, you can rush them and then they yeah, wind you up can, tasting like baby should. vomit. So, right, um, right. But this beer was one that, so Jason came up with a recipe uh, when he was still home brewing and it was a Flanders red mixed with a cider was the original. And you'll see that with a lot of our beers as they evolve, as we go, um, we always had a, difficult time duplicating his small batch in our big system. Um, once you bring apples and cider into it, I have more respect for cideries now after trying some of this stuff, a uh, whole different ball game than fermenting, you know, barley water. <laughs> um, so we did a couple batches and then we decided to turn it into a sour. So this is basically a beer cider hybrid fermented clean. It then went into barrels. This had, so I'm sorry, I'm step back. But um, so this actually included actual apples. Like we didn't buy cider mix. We chopped up apples, put them in there. Um, our brewer's uh, family, his wife's family runs a orchard out mm-hmm. in Adams County. So these are from his orchard, brought them in, and we processed them all there nice. one day. Um, oh, it wasn't nice. It was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can burn through a lot of non-commercial grade uh, equipment trying to, food process apples all day long. Uh, um, and then it sat and then we bottle conditioned it with maple syrup. Oh, I got uh, some maple in it. Yeah. Yep. yep. And this is what, so it's, it probably sat eight months, something like that. Oh, at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, and then this is bottled. This was bottled. Eight years. Seven, yeah, eight so years this, ago. this has been around for a while. So this is actually like seven, eight years. Absolutely. Yeah, this is been from root. Just in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. figure it had a year, year, about a year in, in barrels, and then it's been in a bottle for. So one question before we get, I mean, so you're not using any special, uh, well, I want to say souring yeast or something no. like that. These are, this is actually fermenting sour. Correct. Well, we're, we, yeah, we're, I mean, we're using lacto, lactobacillus and um, that's okay. um, Brett. So it's a, so this is where it gets a little wonky sometimes. It's a clean beer. So this beer started out just like, oh, yeah, a regular blonde ale. It goes into the barrels and that's when the wilds go in. Yep, right. And those wilds, the reason it has to sit in a barrel so long is those wilds take a long time to, to, yeah, to naturally ferment. Exactly. Out. Cause they'll yeah. go in and get every piece of sugar it can find. Um, you know, you guys know that you know, yeast won't eat all the sugar, nope. in it, nope. but the wilds will go. Oh, down. yeah. Wilds will. So you, you leave it in there long enough, you have one of the driest things you've ever tried. <laughs> so what, what's, the, what's the actual name of this beer? This was just... Yeah, we just kept this. It was just sour, sour apple. apple. Sour <laughs> apple. Yeah. Sour all right. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Sour apple. That is different. That's good. That is, that's unlike any other sour I've had. Yeah. So something I should have, when you asked the name, we should have. So we, we brand all of our um, sours Codex of the Wild Orchard. So Codex, going back to the literary stuff, Codexes are the first bound books from scrolls. Yeah. Um, so uh, these are, when I say old world, these are the harken back to the Flanders Reds and the beers like that. So um, these, these are, the sours in here are much more complex. It is very complex. There's a That's lot of flavors say. that come through that when you bu- go buy your strawberry daiquiri banana um, sour that aren't there because yeah, they're, the, they're the, soured in different ways. Yeah. This is letting the wilds do their thing. This, I, I'm getting, like you just said, I'm getting a complex variety. I really don't get that, that sour apple right away. 
it kind of lingers on the palate, but then at the very end, I'm getting kind of a almost like a boozy end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're getting like you're drinking um, some hard stuff that's been sitting around for a while, and like you said, this has been sitting around. I I like this. I couldn't drink more than one of these. <laughs> uh, one glass would be enough. Uh, but holy, this is. That's, this is unlike any other sour beer that I've had. This, you, is, this is different. When you do it right and you give the sour the time it needs to finish, um, this is what you can make. And, I mean, this is one step even further down the, the pike where we've, given, we've cellared it. Um, mm -hmm. We would like to do that. We have our own little private stash in the, in the can oh, cooler where we'll save, you know, we'll let beers, some certain beers like a red rye. That's why we brought, you know, three different years so you guys can see, you know, if, if you want to do a vertical tasting, see how it changes a little bit. Oh, we're all up for that shit, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And then usually on um, the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, um, usually I'll break out some, just a handful of some of our cellar stuff, and I'll sell the, the private ten, stock. Ten bottles of the, it or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. This is this and this is complex. It's yeah. very complex. And, and I am. I mean, I get the, you can taste almost that it's more natural and wild, like you're saying, organic maybe, mm -hmm. uh, than some of the other sours where you're yeah. you're you're forcing the sour in the kettle. Right. Yeah, but between us three, I I don't know if we've ever gone wrong with you guys. We we're always uh, picking up something about you know, uh, Yeah, Aldis, not Aldis, Aldis. Like the just, tool. It, well, just like what the tool, the all. <laughs> I was gonna say who's oh. gonna uh, one of our um, our good. Good friends always used to say, who's going to help us drink all this beer? <laughs> oh, I love okay. it. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. And then as you, as you had more beer, who's going to help us drink all this beer? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's fucking ingenious. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, so that's commercial that. material. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're making a commercial. <laughs> Are you guys going to do a commercial like that? Uh, we'll see. One day, one day. I don't know. I have a face for radio, so... <laughs> We'll I've see. been told the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So what do you think, Dave? You are the sour guru. The sour guru. I just <laughs> love that. The, the way you, that just rolls right <laughs> off your tongue without you even thinking about it. Yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. It is, it is, it is a good sour. I, 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 but I've got, to, I've got to, you know, clarify that with the fact that it is a sour. Right. And I am not... <laughs> The sour I like guru. Throwing, yeah. I like throwing Dave under the bus. Yeah, he does. And then backing up again. <laughs> yeah, that's tire marks all over. Yeah, but he, but he said it was good though. Yeah, he finished it. it. I, I'm impressed. I yeah, you know, you, you joke about that, but I I did have one sour that I didn't finish, <laughs> and it sat and it sat uh, in the um, in the glass there through the entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go back through and watch it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm honored that you enjoyed it, at least enough to finish it. So yes. Yeah. And like I said, yeah, one would be good because, I, A, I think, too, I'd be, you'd be uh, picking me up off the floor. Yeah. So when you let that organically, your sours organically, uh, do they usually come in at a lot higher ABV because you're starting off with a, with a different base than some sours good, good are? Good question. I would say we're, this beer probably started off around 5 6% before we put it into the barrels. And then you had fruit on top of that, along with the brets and, and the other um, wilds that are just going to rip through any oh, of that yeah. non-fermentable sugar. If I had to guess, I would say he's upwards of 7. Yeah, probably. That's seven, what I was going to say. 7 and a half. Guesstimate between 7 and 8. I would yeah. go a little yeah. higher. All right. It's, uh, it's, it's very yeah. possible because, <laughs> once again, that's for our normal sours. This is sat even longer. Right. Those things are in there. They're alive. They're they're doing their thing. Yeah, yeah so they should be. What other flavors do you when you do sours? What other flavors do you add when you do the sours? We, so we mostly stick to fruit because we need we want to add that extra sugar and to give those wilds something to do. Um, currently our current sour batch is a tropical. So that was uh, mango and pineapple stuff like that. We have a elderflower, which was something a little bit different for us. Um, that, that, I wouldn't even know what the hell that tastes like. <laughs> yeah, I no, yeah, same. Do you ever have St. Germain? The liquor St. Germain? Nah. Okay, well, sorry, singer. man. He might. I thought it was I, a singer. Dave might. <laughs> but. Um, we have a strawberry and a wild berry. I was going to oh. ask about strawberry. Yeah, mm -hmm. strawberry. So the, the elderflower and the strawberry, they were the same base. We split it. Okay. Um, flavor them. And then the wild berry um, one we've had for... 
about six months, and that took uh, third place in the sour category at the uh, uh, farm show. Cool. And, uh, and we've mentioned we need to get to the farm do. show this year. Um, we said about it last year, and it's like, oh, shit, it's February. We missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it sneaks up on you. Uh, so we usually get our entries in right at the last second because we always forget about <laughs> it. So. so is this like a rotational on your tap system? Uh, the, the sours, is that rotational? So no. So these will never touch our tap systems right oh. now. Cause so because these are true wilds, these yeasts are extremely hard. You cannot kill them with cleanser alone. Okay. Really heat. Is really the only thing you can and do. Cleaning the tap system, you're not so going to clean it out. We, we don't want to risk our tap system. So every once in a while, we'll have one, but it's a, it's almost a glorified uh, homebrew tap. Okay. Like it's, and that's it. And it gets completely pulled out, all the metal, all the gaskets. So, so it's, basically, it's rare to have one. The on only tap. way you're going to get this is in a bottle. bottle. Yeah. yeah, yeah bottle. I mean, you have to call the Catholic Church and like bring in an exorcist. To, uh, wilds are just not something. La, Seriously, la, la. burn the incense, get out the holy water. It, it's not something we want to mess with. When it comes to bottling day, um, our brewer makes sure that the next day is the full brewery spray down day right. because right. it's. Wow. Maybe being a little too cautious, but you can't be too. We don't, yeah, it, God forbid, we infect everything. In our so, well, yeah. And that was one thing when we yeah. started homebrewing, there was, there was three rules. Clean, sanitize, sanitize. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can clean it again. Yeah. I yep. mean, the, the, the big breweries that do a lot of sours, they'll have like UV pathways between their two breweries. The two never shall meet type things. So, wow. Yeah, um, a, yeah. So it's almost exclusively yeah. that. Package. So that's so. Speaking of taps, I mean, when somebody comes into Audis mm-hmm. and your tap room, your current tap room, mm-hmm. what? How many taps? How many taps you got? What's your system? We got sixteen. Sixteen plus. Yeah, we <laughs> sixteen have, plus. Yeah, we have sixteen taps on the outside of the cooler, and then we have a. a Little ghetto home rig system inside the cooler for the sours that you don't want. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know the unholy sours. Um, yeah, so we can usually have on about 20, 20 beers. Wow, that's a lot, and that's <laughs> all yours. You don't bring any guest nope. taps in. Nope, that's awesome. That's a lot of beer. Yeah, we we have small batches. The small batches can be sometimes five gallon trials. Uh, we got a one barrel kind of you know pilot system that we try different things on. Um, we have our four or five year round beers. And then we kind of distinguish seasonals or beers that come out every year um, at a certain time. And then, you know, we'll have just ones we came up with. Hey, let's make this, this time and let's make that. Sure. And let's try this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, throw, let's throw this in the pot. <laughs> how long, how long were you guys open before you started distributing? Was that always a immediately? Yeah. yeah, that was the brewery was opened as a distributor. So we did self distribution for three years, three years, about three, four years. And then okay. we got our first distribution contract. And we had at that time, I think we had three, two package beers. Okay. Um, and then just just grown since then. So is that was that part of the initial business plan? I wanted to be able to distribute because every we've had guests in here, they have no idea, they don't want to do any distribution. That was always the plan. And okay. Actually, the the reason why we're moving the brew pub now is because we always joke and call the brew pub the redheaded stepchild of the of the brewery because we were almost done the brewery and everyone kept coming. Oh, I hear you guys are opening a brewery. You're gonna have a tap room. And after like the 150, 50th person asked me, I'm like, oh, we may have missed something here. So we threw it together. And I mean, we did it with, you know, we try to do it as what we, we're in, a, we're in a warehouse. So it's, there wasn't a whole lot we could do with it. We have 17 foot high, you know, girdered ceilings. Uh, see, that's what makes some of these places cool. It is. It's, it's an industrial feel. It is. We hear a lot that we don't have a lot of, uh, what is it? Uh, ambiance. We don't have ambiance. a lot of ambiance. We have good beer, but yeah, so... Uh, the brew pub actually, I was not planning on, and I don't think Ryan had any interest in opening a brew pub when we first started. Um, but it has become a very important part. Um, I kind of missed the importance of, of having that uh, intimate relationship with your customer and actually getting to, right, right. you know, see them. One, I never understood how important it was going to be to watch them appreciate it, but also get their feedback and see what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. And it's, I think it really allowed us because we really try to listen. We're, we don't try to tell, we don't try to tell the customer what they're going to drink. We want to hear what they want and we try to make it for them in the best way we can. So really I'm glad we did because it was just unknown how important it was going to be. And, and that's, that's a different gauge than just producing and shipping. Mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, Cause now you're be able to gauge what you're seeing 
and, and and take it. Well, shit, maybe that wasn't that great beer. Right. Instead of now you shipped it off, and now somebody's never going to buy it again. Right. So, I mean, now food-wise, do you guys do a kitchen, or is it food trucks, or... <laughs> food is funny. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> take a drive. <laughs> so, we do have food. We literally... So, we make everything... What we have, we want it to be good, so we make it ourselves. It is about the size of this desk, our kitchen. Our kitchen, if you want to call it that. It's basically two little a toaster oven and a kind of a small kitchen. Um, so we do like sandwiches. So we roast our own pork and beef for roast beef and roast pork sandwiches. Um, we get some lo- a local barbecue place. We get some brisket from them, make nachos, Ooh, hummus. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my our hot dogs. From, hot, uh, yeah, we get some awesome yeah. hot dogs from down in Maryland. So um, you can come in. You can have a meal. But it's not a restaurant at no, this it's, point. Sure. It's snack food for while you're drinking. Exactly. It's pub food. I mean, it's it really is. Food. It's yeah. and it's and that's that's fine. I mean, I'm not going there for a four course meal. Right. Exactly. Right. And right. and but we wanted to have that there, and it's all really good stuff. Um, but it's and, and it's truthfully, an to the if beer. you go to a bar and you're drinking, you want something to eat. Why? Exactly. Right. Whether it's just a snack food. But, you know, that way you can drink some more. Exactly. And that's what you guys yeah, all absolutely. want. Is more, hey, drink up. <laughs> we yep. were just talking about that with the new place. We're like, no, let's. Now, now backing up a little bit, before, um, you know, that terrible C word, the COVID, mm. did the distribution help you guys with that? Tremendously. Compared, yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I figured there. It's really what we were, um, I mean, it really pushed us into overdrive in, right. in terms of distribution. Um yeah, I mean, it's what helped keep the brewery open, um, if I'm quite keep honest. Keep those kind of people sane. <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah, and that's where we – actually, you had one of the um, – you were drinking the uh, – The s'mores. The s'mores. That was part of our – we came up with a thing called Rough Draft, and it was a way to get some experimental beers that we wanted to try and kind of test in the market. We figured this is a great time to do it. And that's great. That's a great idea. Um, a lot of breweries are doing that. They have their, yeah. their experimental series. Exactly, yeah. Um, so rough draft is, is, is it all stouts and stuff like that? Or is it whatever you guys want to put in that series? You got it. Whatever, whatever kind of, uh, you know, crazy idea. Someone says, Hey, let's try this and we'll do a, we, we are very, um, meticulous when it comes to recipe building. We will, we have a five gallon test system that was our, our first system that Brian and I started using. We still use it to this day. Because if it's something that's a little too uh, kind of outside of our wheelhouse or a little kind of crazy, or we just, just want to kind of test grains or hops, we'll start with five gallons. We'll move it up to the one gallon or the one barrel system, brew it on there twice, and then then go up to a large, either a four or a ten barrel batch. I was going to ask from what, what, what yep. is your yeah. what is your production? It's, you know, you we have a ten barrel brew 10 house. Barrel. That's a lot of freaking beer. But you're also you're you're do, doing distribution, so it's yes. not all in house distribution. So. Correct. Yeah. So you almost need that big of a system to keep up with the demand. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And we also have a pretty nice fermenter farm. Um, we have how many? We have six. Got six twenties and six tens, so we can double batch into the twenties for. <laughs> yeah, for our more popular beers, they're they're all twenty barrel batches, and then package break down however we need it. That that's a hell of a setup. Well, yeah. We're gonna. Have, we, you guys gotta get yeah, coming. We gotta come yeah. up. We yeah. just, just, just give me like a day's text ahead of time, and we'll we'll show you around. Dave, Dave wants to come up and take pictures and videos. That's def- <laughs> yeah. that's a definitive. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big. I didn't realize that production was that big. I mean, you got a nice. It's a nice big warehouse. Mm-hmm. You yeah. guys got a lot of room, but you you've outgrown it. From what you're saying. Yeah. You're you're outgrown it, which is awesome. It's a good problem to have. Um, because the news that we just got is one of the craft main craft breweries that was started up was Tatter Flag. Oh, it's yeah. closed. And Octo- I think October, October. there, yeah, yeah, they're closing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and I guess uh, Glenn Smith from Brewery Tours wants to kind of sit down and talk to us about it. Have we reached the, the, the eclipse of, the, you know, the peak of where the craft industry is going and, and where, where does it go from here? But... You guys are growing. You're getting ready to open up another location, so to speak. You're just expanding to, and moving your yeah, – so because be your production has grown. So I, I don't know if we've reached it. I just think some people's business plans are smarter than others. I think there's a lot to it. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of – you know, there's a lot of different business plans out there. Some people that are brew pub only. Some people that want distribution. Some people that want a hybrid. Some people that want to have a restaurant and just want to have – alcohol license that they don't so there's all kinds of people out yeah, there and right. and i think it's it's a never moving target i mean like jason said he didn't want that 
when we first went to um, the San Diego uh, Brewers Conference, it was 2011. That's a long yeah, time ago. And we went to it. We went to one of the panels. Was why open a brew pub? I mean, you would think no one would ever have to present that today, but it was a. It was a couple people had figured it out and be like, "This is a great way to get in there." And now that's the model, but at the time it wasn't. Right. Um, and stuff. You know, everything changes so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope it. this market has not hit its peak. I, I think there's a lot of confusion. I, I think there's a lot of, I think COVID really jacked a lot of people up. Changed a lot of people's business plans. It did. Uh, and, you know, I think we're still seeing some of the fallout from that. I do think that the market is a little oversaturated right now, it, especially in Pennsylvania because I, of the laws. Um, so I think, like Ryan said, some people got into it for the wrong reasons. They wanted yeah. to sell liquor. They said, I can sell PA liquor if I, get, if I open a brewery. And that is only so sustainable. So, and I also think there's a lot of good beer out there. But there before is. it was, before it was this place makes good beer. I want to go there right now. Most I'd be willing to say most places make pretty good beer, very drinkable. <laughs> you beer. Know, yeah. Um, some good, some excellent, eh, some I will drink it. So, you know, <laughs> and, and I think the, the, the consumers of craft beer, most people drink craft beer, you know, the same way, even your guy that, you know, pounds his 30 pack every weekend, he can go in there and enjoy other beers. So just opening a brewery where that used to be a ticket to success isn't anymore. No, right? you got to offer people something different. And, and that's something we're putting into our new place. Like we said, when we open this up, you're going to get an experience at this place. It's not just showing up to have some beers because I like their beer. We want, right. you know, it's, it's going to be very unique among and, uh, the and, and, uh, like clubs I, out there. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm on, I'm in charge of a riding motorcycle riding club. Um, and if the group doesn't plan a ride, I'm planning a ride. And guess where I'm planning it to? <laughs> I'm planning to a fucking craft brew house. <laughs> the downside is to that is because I enjoy it, not everybody enjoys it. So I got to look for somebody that sells liquor mm-hmm. right? that can do mixed drinks other than yep. or ciders. And they also have food. Because after like 150 miles, we want to go. We're riding to get something at lunch. So those and not everybody has all that. Um, so I got to kind of plan that where I'm riding to, but and like, if you don't like it, plan a fucking ride. <laughs> if not, I'm planning I'm like, it and you know where we're going, <laughs> you know, where we're going. So, I mean, and you know, my wife doesn't like to go out to these places because a, she's not a huge drinker to begin with. She drinks Corona and water, of course, light. <laughs> you got to stay hydrated. So, yeah. And then, you know, so we don't always go out, but we'll go out to a place, to a crap brew house that has a nice dinner or a meal that, and I don't mind, you mentioned it, I don't mind paying 15, 20 bucks for a beer. I've paid 35, 40 bucks for a beer. <laughs> if it's really good. Yeah, right. we have. Uh, 50. 50. Yeah, 50 plus. Yeah, that's the, uh, the, no, but I played that Duclaw, uh, the Colossus yeah, yeah. Yeah. in that yeah. cabinet. Yeah. Uh, $35 for a 20 ounce can. Um, but oh my god, it was so good. Twenty four point two percent. Let me know when you guys got one of those on tap <laughs> someday. <laughs> that was a barley wine, I think, aged in uh, what did I say, Merlot or something? Like, it was a that wine was, thing. It was more than one. It was more than yeah. I think it was yeah, aged it was, in like two different casks of yeah. wine. It I'm just, not sure. You probably ought to buy another one for us. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, or I would. <laughs> I think they actually who bought them. So Duclaw got sold. Yeah, yeah. place in oh, Jersey man. bought them and shut down all their Maryland operations. Oh, oh that sucks. It does. They were they were buddies of ours. They would come up. Uh, they, their sales guys whenever they were in the neighborhood always stopped in. So we had a little bit of a rapport building with them, and it, it was it was it sucked mm. to hear that. Didn't know. Wow. That. Yeah. So I mean, speaking of the Hanover. Do you guys get in with the brewery tours? Because I know Glenn is trying to get the Hanover thing going. Are you guys in with we that? We had him in a couple times. Like I said, our current location's a little wonky with stuff right. like that. So hopefully once we once we move in a new place, we can get back with him and, and get going again. It's just um, with the staffing we had and where we are, it just it was tough to fit them in, unfortunately. With the new place, we'll have more space for them. Um, you know, we won't have the the brewery on site, but... Um, well, I mean, yeah. I would say if we were going to do brewery tour, we would have them come to the brewery, and then we don't have to worry about yeah. our pub staff taking care of that no, that right. end of things. So, um, but we we did do we did the, do that for a while. It just it got kind of 
it's, the brew pub is small and it's it's not big enough to staff enough people to take care of the brew tour uh, with right. that many people and right. not take away from the other customers at the pub. So it got kind of a little cattywampus. Yeah, and, and it, it's not, it maybe doesn't fit in always business plan and sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I understand that. Um, so you guys got a lot of beer and these are all original recipes you guys have come up with through the years. Cooking, At least I think so. <laughs> cooking beer, <laughs> cooking beer, and nothing else. <laughs> but we have another one sitting in front of us. What we do, do we have? Uh, this is our orange crushicle. Orange crushicle. Yeah, and this is um, it's a, about seven percent beer. Um, good. Like golden ale base with all real fruit, uh, oranges. Was it orange tangerines? Oranges and tangerines. Yep. yep. So all real um, fruit puree. No, there's no flavorings in this, and. Uh, Real uh, Madagascar vanilla. So real Madagascar. Yep. And so a little orange crush sickle. Yep. Give that a little All bit right. of a creamy kind of pop at the end. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Orange crush sickle. Oh, I'm getting that orange right on the right on the nose. Wow. Damn. So What's that, that good? second? They get the orange, but then right after that, is that that's, that's that sourness of maybe the tangerine? Probably the tangerine. tangerine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's um, that's good. I'm getting all that flavor, and at the very end, at the very end of that palate, that vanilla just starts to linger in. It's just it just softens just enough. the end. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know if I like this this or mine better. <laughs> this is damn good. This is a crushable beer. Absolutely. Very crushable. Now, is this only like a summer release beer, or is this an all-year-long? <laughs> That's, That's a great, <laughs> great question. Yeah. So, right now, it's year-round. So this was a beer that hit hard, hit fast, and we were going through it, going through it, going through it. And then it kind of waned a little bit. Uh, we launched distribution in Maryland, and our Maryland distributor was like, I can take this all the time. Like, so we had, for a little bit, we were making smaller batches just for him, basically. And we were ready to make it seasonal or something. And then our PA distributors jumped back on the train. So now it's, so now it's a year round. Yeah. Well, we had some, uh, during COVID, um, we had some issues procuring, well, vanilla was one. They also had a, uh, was it a... Yeah, we we moved away from Madagascar for a couple yeah, of batches because um, we just couldn't get it. We couldn't yeah. get the the vanilla that we the bourbon vanilla that we needed, um, mm. and the price of some of the fruits and and whatnot went up, and so we had to raise the price on it, which we really didn't want to do. And it's not a cheap beer to make to begin with, and that kind of priced it out a little bit. But um, within the last couple of months, we've been able to rein that price back down, which I think has really helped uh, to be able to make it a little more palatable. No pun intended in terms of sure. Uh, or all puns intended for you know for consumers and for, yeah. for the wholesalers because uh, it it can get salty if you know some of those ingredients it can get expensive. It, it doesn't take much for me to go to either Foxes or DJs and spend fifty eighty a hundred bucks on a not even a case of beer because yeah. right. uh, right. I'll be just like wandering. I'm like oh okay I'm gonna take this and this and this and next oh eighty five dollars okay <laughs> ain't telling the wife. <laughs> So that that's that's oh that's a that's a damn good beer and that's that's a it's a what base was that again golden ale the golden ale so it's a different base so it's going to bring the ABV up a little bit higher than a cream ale would be because mm -hmm. that's a lighter beer yep um, that's real that's good so distribution you how wide is your distribution you mentioned Maryland you mentioned PA yeah so we work we got the state of Maryland is covered by uh, one distributor and then throughout Pennsylvania we're all the way uh, Philadelphia suburbs. All the way as west as uh, Johnstown. Wow, you that, got the you got the gambit covered. We got a lot, and we're, we're working on it. Hopefully, we can. Any any uh, plans to go nationwide? <laughs> oh God, no! Um, <laughs> I, I've I've always said I never want to. Uh, Joking, I never want to pass the Mississippi. I don't even know if I want to go that far. Uh, honestly, I don't, and I, I think Ryan shares my sentiment. If I can't get to a place within a day's drive to check beer on a shelf, it's too far. Yeah. Um, you know, we're. Uh, I, I would say the greater Northeast is kind of where That'd we want to stay. You guys, I mean, if you guys branch out there, I mean, your product's getting out there, and, and it's going to only give you sustainability. Right. Right. Um, without without over over stretching ourselves. Yeah. Without so. without doing some things that, you know, like you just said, it might shut you down because you expanded too quick. Yeah. Um. What did I? Shit! I just had a 
brain fart. <laughs> I thought I smelled something. Yeah, that's it too. <laughs> <laughs> Silent but deadly. <laughs> Oh, man, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> Somebody else talk, because I just yeah. lost my train of thought. It's funny that you brought up Johnstown. It's, it's, it's interesting, you know, because I'm, I'm from Johnstown. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I guess if I ever go back, <laughs> I, I, I could pick up your beer. Yeah. <laughs> what, is that, what is that, JR's? Is that, JR's, no, that's, JR's is in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, that's, that's in when, Pittsburgh. When we, that's when in we Pittsburgh. go down and visit my grandson. Okay. That's of course, he lives with his parents, which is my son. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I was just going to well, say that's good. That's usually how it works out. I was just going to say that. He's only three, so <laughs> so they haven't. He's not on his own yet. No, nah, he hasn't. He hasn't gotten a house and a car and a job yet. But uh, that's funny but, how you say that, Dave. When we when we have the grandkids, we forget about our kids. <laughs> we forget about the kids in the middle. You know, we got to well, we we. We have to admit it, you know. It's just you know when we go to Pittsburgh, you know. But what are you going down here for to visit our grandson? I, I'm not worried about visiting my son. He's, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him. <laughs> uh, uh, we, when, once we had kids, I never saw my my parents, my grandparents more in my life. Oh, yeah, and, you're right. And it was hi, how you doing? It was. <laughs> Where are the kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get I, it. I know where the feeling is now. None of my boys have kids yet, which I'm hoping they do. Now, my son, wife's oldest son, has a grandson. Yes. And we just spent, yeah. as we're recording this, we just spent four days at Knoebel's Grove with him. Nice. And uh, you do this shit as you're younger because the older I'm getting, the tired I'm getting. It's like, oh, my God, I'm glad this is over. <laughs> well, it's it's good. You can always you can always play with him for a little while and you can give him back. back. Oh, right? no, 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 no. I just sit there and I let him. And, 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 hey, and I'll yell to my wife, honey. Take care of that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I know where I was going. You have a, a head brewer. So yes. you guys don't do any of the brewing anymore? Do you still come up with the recipes? I mean, what? How does this all work that you got a head brewer now? Well, we're we're a brain trust. Um, okay. So, yeah, we um, – I use that term loosely. I don't know that we <laughs> have a whole brain between the three of us. But, um, yeah, we, we tend to um, – bullshit a lot so we'll sit and we'll kind of th there's two ways recipes come about we kind of get on a conversation hey what if we did this or i come in in the morning and i say guys i got a crazy idea ryan and mitch both cower in the corner <laughs> because they know it's gonna that's actually where orange crush orange came crush from came right yeah i was like guys i got a crazy idea and everyone's like oh god so uh but yeah no we we really work on them all together mitch does i would say mitch probably does 90 percent of the um recipe building ryan and i tend to help out more with conceptual ideas about the beers okay. um but we're all ryan and i are uh, much probably to mitch's chagrin in the brewery more than we probably need to be but we you know uh, especially on small batch brews um just to kind of see where it's going and also to keep our you know our brewing acumen as it were um so we don't become uh you know desk monkeys right 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 so did you guys get to a term in your your partnership that you needed to bring in a full-time head brewer or was this just like it just happened? Um, or, or was all the paperwork and legwork done and Mitch just said, hey, I'm on board now? So we actually had, um, an, we had an original head brewer, um, and that didn't work out. So when we started, I knew that, uh, you know, if, if I actually had a business plan, um, and, uh, you know, I knew that if I was going to be able to make this successful, I wasn't going to be able to do, you can't do everything. Right. You know, you can't. No, as a business owner, you got to be able to delegate. Right. And I knew that making the beer, selling the beer, advertising the beer, doing payroll, doing TTB reports by myself, or just being one person doing that wasn't going to happen. So um, before Ryan came, I had hired a head brewer, and um, he worked with us for about a year. That didn't work out. And Mitch, actually, was kind of funny. He was, Mitch started as a, uh, as a bar back, then became our bar manager. At that time, he said, hey, I want to start helping out in the brewery. And, I, and we're like, sure. And our head brewer left, and I'm like, shit, we gotta, we gotta find, we gotta find another brewer. And Ryan's like, what about Mitch? I guess they had had a conversation, and Mitch was like, man, he wanted to throw his hat in the ring. And I'm like, damn, he's only really worked with us for. We were the first brewery he ever, you know, worked well. Not a lot of experience. Out. Ryan yeah. was a super avid home brewer, right? So like, you know, you kind of have your home brewers that know what they're doing, and then you have and Mitch. then the guys <laughs> that like really get into it and. You know, sometimes, you know, so he was that like next level home brewer entering competitions where he was, he's from Michigan and stuff. So 
he was kind of that next guy that really knew. He understood the plan. He understood the right. process. Yeah, you know, he's the guy that says, well, this used to be slightly different than this one. Like, eh. But sometimes. long and short of it, <laughs> long and short of it, uh, I'm like, Ryan, you know, Ryan and I went and had a, had a conversation. I'm like, well, <laughs> what could it hurt to give the kid a shot? And it was probably one of the best decisions we ever made as a company was to bring let Mitch take over. He has just oh, been an absolute rock good, star. Good so that's guys. been almost... Ten years plus. It's been yeah. He's he took over about a year, about a year and a couple months after yeah, we I mean, opened. It was it was I started in April, so and was, Jeff was gone in Jeff July. Was, Jeff was there about basically yeah. I mean yeah. so it's he's oh, wow. Been, it's yeah. all, so would you, before we sat down here, you said he was supposed to be here, but he was he's out running mar- uh, marathons, <laughs> ultra thons, or whatever you call. It. This help, is up your alley, Kevin. He's helping somebody else. I don't quite get it, but apparently runners need buddies to run with. Yeah. So he's the running buddy. I just need a, I need a beer cart to run with, <laughs> to ride on. That's why you'll never see me on a golf cart or a golf course. I'll drive the cart and drink oh, the beer, but man. I won't be swinging the iron. I need to be chased by a cougar to, to run. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. If you see me running, you better be faster than me, right? I want to push you down. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, you, you guys got it going on. Uh, and... You and I were just talking before we we sat back down here. Uh, you you got some social media posts. Who's in charge of the social media? So we have one. So we really like to let our people shine through and do what they're doing. So most of the employees at the place have access to our social media, um, specifically like our pub manager. So she can if. It's Thursday, and it's she wants to do a special. She can just post it up. Okay. So that's where um, you know. So our public staff are they're, they're really they work really well together. They hang out a lot after. So um, you know, one of the guys he's you know has a little art thing to him. He wanted to make jerseys, and so everybody got a different jersey. The two ladies got soccer jerseys. One guy got a football. One guy got a jer- uh, baseball. And the two of them just decided to start wearing their jerseys on Thursday. Oh, so they call it Jersey. Their Jersey. (laughs) Jersey, yeah. That's pretty cool. And right now, the soccer ones would be good because the women's national team is playing for uh, a third straight World Cup while we're recording this. So then they said, if you wear another jersey in on Thursday, we'll give you a little discount on your beer. So that's (laughs) and and see that in social media is where it's at. And that's how you get your word out. And that's how you that's how you build your brand. Absolutely. Um, I'm no social media guru. Kevin, you're the TikTok guru. And you haven't done a damn thing about it yet, have you? No. No. Unfortunately. Let me know when you guys get that started. I'll definitely uh, subscribe. <laughs> I, I don't even know what TikTok we, is. We have one, but uh, my son's kind of doing it a little bit. At a, it's not, yeah, unfortunately, it's not our priority. Yeah, well, it's, well, it yeah. should be because... Right, because I don't do enough. Social media is where it's at. I mean, and that's where most of these. I'm assuming your staff's younger generation, right? Yep, Um, we're not us old heads. Yeah, yeah. and I went to a training seminar last year with my entire staff. I took. I'm in the automotive field, and everybody that's listening to this podcast knows that. But I took my staff for the first time to a training event, and I got a 20 year old as one of my technicians, and I took a course called. Generate what? What's this new generation called? Um, Millennials? No, no, no. no, no. Z's. There's Gen one Z's. 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 Yeah. yeah. Understanding Gen Z. So he's a Gen Zer. It was the best training course as a business owner I ever took. A, I got to understand them a little bit better. Why they are not connected the way I was brought up to be? Because they're they're bored. They're they're meant to be. They're they're hard workers, but they're also meant to be socially engaged. So I I empowered my staff. To do the same thing you guys are doing. So if you understand this younger generation, it doesn't mean they're lazy. We think oh, they no, are. No, no. What, yeah. We think they are. They just work differently. But yeah. you empower your staff to do what they do best. You that's it, man. Right there. Yep. And, and so I empowered him. I put him on my social media. Dude, you're in charge. You take now I am paying it under the company to do some of the posts, but I dude, you do videos, whatever you want to do. You're in charge. I don't, I don't have time for it, and I don't understand it. Right. Well, so uh, like Ryan was saying, we really kind of, I mean, we all have access to our social media, Instagram and everything. Um, 
and everyone can post. We do have our buddy Shane who does a lot of the fun animated posts. Uh, any of the like super awesome, like right. crazy right. graphic posts, that's Shane. Otherwise, it's probably Noel or sometimes. And I think it's yeah. awesome as a business owner. You let your staff, you, you find out what their strengths are. Let them let them run the wheel. And they'll excel at that. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. And, and that goes out to any business owner, yep. uh, no matter what, what field you're in. So I think that's awesome. Um, what are you guys finding like your future? I mean, like you, you, you know, you're you're expanding your production area. You're going to move a tapper into a, a more centralized location. Any future plans going forward, or not there yet? World domination um, World is, <laughs> is, is uh, but two not words across the Mississippi, but not across the Mississippi. <laughs> From we're going to go we're gonna to the east. <laughs> what was that cartoon? That. What was that cartoon? Pinky and Pinky the, in the brain. brain. Yes. What are we doing today? <laughs> I'm going to dominate the world. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> no. But anyways. Yeah, we want to um, We want to uh, continue to... My, so my whole thing has always been... Um, yeah, I've, I've come to learn there's only uh, two kinds of people that own a small business. Obviously, I'm grossly um, overgeneralizing this. You're either, you're either crazy or really passionate about what you're doing. Um, I'm not sure which of those categories I fall into yet. But... Um, <laughs> You know, we want to grow the business to be able to. It's always been about um, employing people and making people happy. Those are the two things that, you know, I think we try to, as a company, push for. Um, so, really, we want to grow the company, be able to continue to employ fantastic people, uh, get them better benefits, um, keep them forever, you know, uh, make them want to stay with the company forever. At the same time, you know, it's, you know, if you have happy employees, you have happy customers. Exactly, and uh, yeah. we want to grow large enough that we can support generations of um, both. But, nice. You know, and that—that's really how we do that. Uh, I can't say right now because because the landscape is shifting and changing a little bit. It, but it, 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 as a business owner, you got to think every day. It, it's like a chess game; and you have to think four, you know, four or five moves ahead. Um, and so that's really the goal is to continue to grow to be large enough to support a decent sized staff. And uh, like I said, that's probably going to look like. You know, the northeast, and that'll probably be it. Uh, you know, I don't think we need to get. I don't want to get so big, not that we could necessarily, but if we could, uh, that we you can't manage all your pieces. Right. Um, right. That's just not interesting to me at all. Um, no. So there, there. What? Who's the guy that owns Virgin Records and stuff? What's his? Oh, Richard name? Branson. Yeah. So Branson. There, there's a quote that that I remember <laughs> from my management training and ownership training is, uh, "Train your people." as if they were going to leave. Treat right. them as if they will never leave. So, and, and that's the motto you just said. Yep. Um, and that, that's always stuck in my head as a business owner. And it was thrown in my lap. I've never been a business owner. It was thrown in my lap when my parents passed away. But I'm figuring out every day and trying to figure out ways to keep my staff to make them happy that they don't want to leave and to attract new staff. Like you said, every everything as a business owner is you want to provide a good quality living for your staff and yourself. Yep, and build that re, uh, community relationship. Absolutely, and I think you guys have done done quite well at, at that. You got uh, it speaks for itself. You guys have been around for quite some time. You're not a fly by night craft brew pub that's opened up and closed. So we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, very well. Thank so, you. Uh, you, so this, so your wife, this was a thing that you, you told your wife 11, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's worked out well, I'm assuming. You're still married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is your full-time job. And she hasn't smothered me yet, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. So, Ryan, when you came into this, were you still trying to work a full-time job and this, or was this like, I'm cutting my full-time job and I'm jumping feet first? Exactly. It was, I, I moved. I, I moved <laughs> from Westchester, so yeah, we... Mm. Cut and moved up here, became part of the Hanover community here, and yeah, full time and putting ourselves to it. I mean, like you know, we we want to grow this, we want to move it, and it it takes time and people and effort to do it. And um, more power to the people that do it on the side. But I can't imagine. How, and we we've had several guests it. on here that this is just a, a secondhand thought. They yeah, still have a full time right. job, and yeah. they, and actually they're doing two full time jobs because yeah, they're running yeah. their own brew pubs. Um, you know, for instance, Derek Wolf. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he's running a full-time day job and then the brewery on top. I'm like, dude, no wonder it took forever to get you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. so, 
Um, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah he's you know, he spends it, a lot of time. Well, we were dumbfounded by him, and we were dumbfounded by yeah. the history lesson from all of us here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, that's, that's good. That's what you know, it's. Really that's what makes every story that we have on here. And this is yeah. when we started this. Um, we wanted to bring the guest in, and because who wants to sit around and listen to us three talk yeah. <laughs> bullshit? That lasted a week, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> two episodes. Two episodes. Two episodes. <laughs> two episodes. <laughs> and there, we, and needed, we, and we only got a couple hits on that. So yeah. Now our, our goal when we started this was yeah. to let's get comfortable, and we wanted to start bringing a guest in and featuring what's in this area and what can we do to help spread the word that you guys. Um, so we're we're glad we could do this. I did I did notice that you, you the the building that you're in. It's uh, you you had mentioned it was in the 1920s that the, the building was from the 1920s, and I was just I was curious how long have you been in the building? I know it hasn't been that long, has it? No, no, it's that we <laughs> opened there. Um, so we took uh, we took over there. Uh, the no, we only we only rent the front part of the building. Okay, um, and. Uh, we started there, so we it would have been 2012 when we took over and started building. Then we opened in 2014, so we've been there since 2000. We've we've, we've been in location since 2012, um, mm-hmm. opening in 2014. Okay, so the so the rest of the building is pretty much open still. Or it's, it, got- uh, there are uh, so our landlord uh, does a food uh, pack. Uh, he rebuilds food manufacturing equipment. So oh, a lot of the okay. it's where a lot of warehouse space. Yeah, I'm kind of. Um, yeah, I was kind of curious because um, someone had mentioned to us about a huge building that he wanted to buy and put a brewery in. <laughs> uh, so it's not that one. There's nowhere to put it. <laughs> it's now going to be a uh, storage unit. Storage yeah, unit. I, I saw that. <laughs> that's what we so, need, more storage units. Yeah, we lost yeah. our... We lost our uh, that's what I say about AI. Everybody's talking about all these AI robots. And I said, we've got enough people on this earth. We don't need to build them now, do we? <laughs> now, there was, there's an a old grocery store down the road from us here. Oh, we passed it. You know, we saw the, yes. sign, saw the yeah. sign that said, yeah. I said yeah. that would be the perfect spot for a craft We had some feelings of one. Pub idea. <laughs> yes. But A, I'm not giving up my weekends. <laughs> I've given up my weekends when I was a disc jockey. So, no, no yeah. more. I'm enjoying my weekends way too much. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I was thinking, you know, you got the brew, brew pub in the middle. Of course, the new thing, if they got one in Hanover, is the axe throwing. <laughs> Nothing and, mixes better with um, axe throwing than alcohol. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> right? And then on the other side, we could do a golf simulator. <laughs> Well, the golf simulator, I kind of like like the idea on that one, but uh, the axe throwing I'm, on the I'm other side with, you know, my, with my the pitcher of beer. Starting. I, I got something for brewing. Hmm. You got the money? Maybe we can outbid move in storage. Yeah, actually, he's got the money. <laughs> well, he's only, yeah, yeah, no worries. We don't. Uh, so, sports wise, you guys into sports? We, we know are. you're in the, I mean, I know we're going to get to Jason here. Uh, who's into sports? Ryan, you're both into of us. Both of us. Yeah, both so, of us? Yeah, so, uh, like Jason's, um, he was born, born, born in Philadelphia, and I grew up in the Burbs, so. Big Philly, I'm um, big Philly fan. Yeah, they made a pretty good run last year. They almost had a, almost had a good shot. Yeah, yeah. It's they all, did better than I thought they were going to. Absolutely, do. yeah. They, they they caught fire at the right time. So yeah, so that's what. Especially come the summer, that's most of my nights are yeah. taking up watching the Phillies. Yeah, how I about kinda, my Pirates here? You know what are they doing? <laughs> Dude, they they started off the first quarter yeah, of the did. season, and then they, they, they did. fell back down to normality. They're giving yeah. the Phillies a hell of a run this weekend. Yeah, yeah. are they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a Yankees fan, yeah. and as we sit here. And record right, this. Go. They're at the fucking bottom of the East. <laughs> Although they just did beat the Orioles one. They did last night. But, uh, but yeah, the Yankees suck. Um, <laughs> and I hate to hear that. I don't care where they finish as long as they finish ahead of Boston. <laughs> what, and right now they're below Boston. Hmm. The thing with the Yankees, what? Jeter, Judge, Judge, Judge. Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the next J? I, I don't know. Um, Anyways, they, they need to offload some of their staff. So, do you get to a lot of the Phillies games being yeah. still Phillies fans or not? You don't have time. I mean, my wife used to. Ch- first couple of years we were up here, we made it to a game or two. We haven't been to a game pre COVID, probably was the last year we went to one, but um, fortunately, I still watch them every night. So. so, you're from the Philly area. There's a bunch of well known brew pubs, yeah, craft yeah, brew houses. What's some of your favorites from the Philly area? Uh, I mean, Monks is. Probably by is that far. chatty monks. No, 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 just monks. Monks, monks okay. cafe. I've heard uh, that a few times. If you can get in, uh, it's an amazing place. Yeah. Um, just it's a Belgian 
Yeah. Belgian cafe. Uh, yeah. One of my all time favorite places in the city. Oh. Okay. No what chance of a co-op with them. Huh? <laughs> <I> wish, <laughs> wish. <laughs> well, I grew up like less than 10 minutes from victory. So victory always has a, okay. a place in my heart for, I mean, I started, uh, you know, just buying pizzas from them when I was underage and then started going there. Um, and that's why you started homebrewing in college. Yeah, right? exactly, under age. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy the product. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a little weirdo. There's a lot of homebrew shops and stuff, but yeah, victory is my, cause I still, Enjoy some of their, a lot of their stuff still. So, so I was in Philly. I went to Iron, what is it? Uh, uh, Iron Hill? Iron Hill. Yeah, Iron, Iron Hill. Hill. But I like Love City. Oh, Love City. Yeah. It's, it's not in the greatest part of town. <laughs> uh, I felt a little weird parking down there in that little paved, not even a paved street. I think it was a bricked street. Uh, but cool little joint. And there's so much more out there in, inside Philly oh, yeah. that I got to uh, get yeah. to. Um just like when I went to Pittsburgh, there was plenty there that I had to I bypassed. I didn't get to yet, but I think it, I think the craft brew industry. I don't think it's dying. I don't think we've hit the peak. No. No. I hope we don't. And and if we have hit the peak, let those who have made it sustain mm. and keep this 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 industry going. I think it's a hiccup. I think it's a like I said, it's gonna it's a you know every every industry goes through cycles, and I think we're hitting a peak where there's a like ryan said there's a lot of good beers out there and there's a lot of not great beers out there and i think we're going to start weeding out those that are really in it for the right things um and that that are that want to make a quality product and then those that don't will fall off to the wayside right it's so, a stock market yeah and and you know for those that don't travel this path like the craft beer they do the the mass the big box mass stores um they think of IPA or craft brews as IPAs. <laughs> I don't like IPA. Yeah. It, it's not all IPAs. We have a joke in the brewery that I, I'm, I, I'm, it's a joke, but I'm pretty sure there's this couple of people out there that there's a group of people that think IPA means craft beer. Like that all oh, craft yeah. beer is an IPA. When I first started, I, yeah. I was a whiskey drinker, you know. <laughs> Bourbon whiskey. Until we started down the beer path. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't uh, use you can't say was was because you still yeah, are. I mean, but you know, it's, I think it's time for a beer. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I brought that up. Yeah, you know, there we, you gotta, go. we, we you know IPAs and people think of an IPA, and we have one sitting in front of us. And yeah. uh, I think there's a little story behind it because what's this called? Jason hates it. All right, so what's the story, Jason? All right, so 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 does Jason hate it? <laughs> I got burned out on IPAs, um, and so Mitch, when he, he had taken over as our head brewer, um, was you know doing a great job. Um, we already had a couple IPAs, and my goal was to not become synonymous with IPAs. Mm-hmm. So, so there's enough of them out here; doesn't need to be any more on the market. And Mitch had this idea for this sort of. East Coast meets West Coast style beer that took a little bit of the best from each sort of um, beer so style. So we call it a Midwest IPA. <laughs> but, uh, and he's from the Midwest, so it makes sense. Um, but I'm like, no, we don't need any more IPAs. We have enough. And I'm just like, hey, we don't. And, you know, I'm like, I don't feel like taste testing this. I just don't want to make any more IPAs. Well, I can't remember what the beer was that he had made, but he had killed some. I mean, he, it was a double. Actually. It was a double. And he, I mean, I actually found myself drinking, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And so he's like, we, Ryan and he and I were meeting, and he's like, well, so can I make my beer now? And Ryan's like, oh, we can call it Jason Hates It. <laughs> and I'm thinking, call it whatever the fuck you want. We're never probably going to make it again. And uh, so we made it, and I, co- I completely forgot about it. And then uh, I do a lot of the artwork still for the for the brewery. Like, oh, we need a tap handle, you know, and so I... Like, oh, I'm gonna get these motherfuckers. So I went into my I went into my office and I took the worst possible picture of myself that I could. You can see on the label, the top of my head's cut oh, off. The label will be put into the podcast. <laughs> yes, so. you'll no see respect it. for this label whatsoever. And I'm like, here's your here's your tap handle, guys. And uh, it was a real funny joke. Well, I'd become one of the fastest selling uh, seasonal beers that we had ever made. Oh, oh, oh. And first it was, oh man, you guys gotta make some t-shirts with that logo <laughs> or that uh, face on. I'm like, oh Christ. So yeah. we made the t-shirts, and then it was, when are you guys gonna start packaging this? And by that point, it would have been disingenuous to change the label or the name. Oh, no, it, it, it and suits to a T. So I, I use this story as a cautionary tale for the youngins about how to uh, properly proctor your sarcasm <laughs> that it can jump up and bite you in the ass. Yeah. Because now I'll run into one of my kids' teachers, and they have one of the shirts, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, really? 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's a little awkward. You're the Jason hates it. <laughs> Good Lord, I use it to scare my kids into bed at night. I'm like, I, I, I get it. So this is, is this a double or a single? This is just a straight just up. Straight up IPA. Straight and if you can IPA. see, it is clear. very clear yeah. beer. All right, so Jason hates it. Cheers. Cheers. You're going to have to blur my face out. Uh, if anyone sees me drinking this, it'll cause riots <laughs> in the street. So oh. <laughs> That was a good one. I'll, I'll get that little blur effect yeah, going. Uh, Jason hates it. Uh, it's IPA. Uh, Smooth. Midwest IPA, you could say. <laughs> Smooth going down. It's pretty good. It's it got, a, it's got a distinct aroma. Tastes like an IPA. That's different. It is. It's soft. It is. It, it's so exactly. It, so, it, the best way to describe it is hopped like a West Coast, an old kind of a real old school like think old Sierra stone. Nevada stuff, Sierra, yes. stuff like that with those New World Pacific Northwest hops, and then but the water profile of your classic East Coast IPA is kind of the. It's whole it's, idea of it's, this one. it's subtle. It's not yeah. overbearing. No, I can no, see no. why this is a popular beer. A little bit of bitterness, but then still a little sweet. You know, so it's got it's a. This is this is one of the best examples of our idea. The whole reason we call ourselves Aldis and what we're going. So why does there. fucking Jason hate? Because <laughs> he doesn't know. Well, because frankly, I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, honestly, I will drink this from time to time, and I I do have to I have to hide. I, I, I hide my office. Um, it is a great. It, it takes all of the things about IPAs that I, I enjoy, and, you know, this is just hats off to Mitch. He is the – um, I wish he was here, but uh, – To me, I don't even get, like, an IPA bitterness out of that. That's, like, subtle, very, juicy. Very little bit. Like uh, I get the citrus flavor. notes coming forward, yep. and it doesn't even finish that dry like an IPA normally does. Well, and that's in the grain build. Uh, more of a, the grain build, I would say, the water profiles. Uh, and Mitch will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if he were here, he will tomorrow. Um, but it's, it's more of an East Coast grain yeah, build. And, uh, that's delicious. And I, I, I can't remember if I've had this before, um, but I knew there had to be a story behind the label. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad we got it. So, and when, when, we, when we put this in here, there will be, the, you'll, you'll see the label. And That's it's great. Jason's face. <laughs> yes. You know, as a joke, it turned out to be yeah. the, it, it turned out to be a, 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 a popular seller. Whenever we have it at a show or something, everyone's always points me like, are you Jason? And I said, I just got to get a shirt that says, no, I'm not Jason. <laughs> just just to wear it. I like that. <laughs> I am not Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always funny when I'm like off the side and uh, I hear someone, what the hell's wrong with this guy? This beer is great. What kind of ass wasn't like this beer? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then it shows every, anyone who has an ex named Jason or their brother that they don't like. They're all like, oh, I got to send them a picture of this. They're all going. <laughs> it's, it's, that, that definitely gets the people talking. <laughs> and it's actually... Go ahead. That's Dave. funny. That's actually, you can say Jason. That's my son's name. But his middle name is Jason. Jason, yeah, yeah, I don't think any of you guys knew that. He didn't go by. He didn't. He didn't live near Crystal Lake. <laughs> I was born on Friday the Thirteenth, yeah. actually. But you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. I yeah, don't, I don't know if you guys was listening to Jason, but he said something very important. As I was at work, I brought the beer into my office. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this I, this One is a little jealous benefits. about this. Yeah. 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 Quality assurance is my. Uh, I, yes, I like that. Yeah, that's wow. kind of cool that you can actually, you know, drink beer at work. <laughs> uh, it's a slippery slope, <laughs> if I might be honest. I was I was just walking through the bur the pub on Friday. They were um, they were taking pictures for social media, so they had to be pouring a beer. And I was just walking by, and one of the bartenders was like, "Here, Ryan, drink this." I'm like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> sure." I'm just gonna twist my arm. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you got to, if, I, if I would bring my product into my office, for oh. example, I'm drinking 5W30 or 10W20. <laughs> oh, yeah. and <laughs> Different kind of lubrication. Yeah. <laughs> Different kind of lubrication, but we're going to leave it to ve <laughs> vehicular lubrication. <laughs> Mine's all straight up concrete. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, you're in the concrete. That doesn't business. sit so well after it hard. <laughs> no, oh. a little bit of digestion. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Uh, Favorite beer style. So we know Jason hates IPAs. Yeah, well, we start there. <laughs> what is some of your favorite beer styles? These days, I'm I'm I've gone back to the lagers. I really have. I just 
you know, I guess as I get older and can't handle the seven, eight percent beers as much, just you make me a good amber or even I love amber yeah, lagers. Just, yeah. Just I I, I think sometimes you just want to drink a beer for beer. You don't need to overanalyze it. Right. You know, I I can appreciate really breaking down a beer, but some points I just want to drink a beer. <laughs> and and I think Ambers to me, they have everything for it and stuff. So that's just a And I, I'm with you. Um, and I think we were talking a little bit traditional beers. And you guys had mentioned you guys are starting to bring back some traditional styles. And I think some of the craft brew industry is starting to go back to that traditional base and not put all the adjuncts into it. Just bring out some great traditional beer. I mean, they're 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 traditional for a reason. You know, they've been drank for hundreds of years for (laughs) a reason. So um, you know, it's they're not as you know they don't have this shiny bells and whistles, but you get people to drink them like, Oh yeah. Okay. This is why this is good. Um, right. We did our first of our classic series was just a pale ale, a just good old fashioned pale ale. And it, it, people loved it. <laughs> like, see. And what's, what's the original, one of the originals in uh, Sierra Nevada had a, a that was Sierra Nevada pale ale. Yep, was, yeah. was like, it's a traditional mm-hmm. American pale ale. Yep. Yep. Um, and I think Mike Mike from Starview said that's what really started him down this path was the Sierra Nevada. Um, so, and I think you guys get back to your roots. I like any kind of amber, um, red, mm-hmm. dark, uh, even some. You know, the, give me a good Czech Pilsner. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mitch would have loved to hear you say that. Oh, yeah. Pilsner's his thing. <laughs> I love, I, you give me some of the uh, Czechoslovakian Pilsner or something like that, and it, as long as it's clean, crisp, that's a beer. Mm-hmm. And it's a great test of a, of a brewery's or a brewer's metal as well, because you can't hide uh, yeah. with a Pilsner or a lager. We've said that before. Yeah, you can, there's that. nothing to hide behind. So We've heard that before, and, and that's uh, one thing. It was a Francisco. Yeah, from Mad Chef said keeps coming back. You bring up you you make a a light or a pilsner or something like that, and and how clear it can be. You're not hiding anything. You can't hide it with the adjuncts yeah. and and the fruits and all that stuff and hops. It, it that's it, and you just said it. Yep, that's that's going to distinguish distinguish the brewers that are going to sustain and, and survive. Than the ones that are going to fall fall to the wayside because they're trying to hide their product. Um, and I think you guys got a good base going on. Um, have you guys dabbled in? I mean, do you guys do you like the pilsners and yeah. stuff like that? So we we have a a it's we it's a basically a pilsner. We have right one right now. It's called a haymaker lager. Um, it's basically a pilsner recipe. Um, like I said, it's it is Mitch's. If he had to fill out, he would say that's his favorite style. That's his style. pilsner. Um, I think, you know, they're, they're, they're great beers to make, you know, but it's, we've tried them. They're good. They just, for wherever we are, where they don't move the needle for people, which and, I, and, which and, is unfortunate, but you know, if I like, like, I think I mentioned earlier, if I bring my riding club to a place, mm-hmm. some of the guys like Miller light, that's a Pilsner. It's a light Pilsner. Yep. So it, they'll ask me, well, what, do, what do you think I'm going to like? If they have a Pilsner on the tap, Try that because it's going to be more. It's going to be better than your fucking Miller Lite, <laughs> but it's going to be in that same profile, yeah. you know, because it's a pilsner. It's a light beer. It's going to be crisp and clear, and, and and with a little bit malt on the palate and finish pretty good. So, it the traditional styles. You know, we had brewed an English IPA. Mm-hmm. That's a lost style, uh, but some of these lost styles are starting to come back. You and I yeah. were talking, Jason, before we sat back down. Scottish Wee Heavy. Oh, yeah. That's one of my faves. I love Scottish Wee Heavy. And not many people are doing it, but I think some of the, that style is starting to come back. It's starting to make a good comeback. And it's going to introduce a new people that thought craft brews are all IPAs. Yep. But no, we're way much more. We can Absolutely. do all these styles and give it to you in a, in a great product. Um and you you had mentioned you were doing you have a Scottish Wee series. Yeah, well, so we um one of the first beers we ever made, one of the first three beers we made was a Scotch Wee Heavy. Um it was called Wee Dame. 
and uh, we're bringing that back this year. And I believe we're going to be taking it all and aging it in. Oh uh, God, I can't wait to fucking try it. <laughs> yeah, <it'll be> bourbon <laughs> aged bourbon casks. It'll be these. Uh, the, it'll be the red rye barrels when they're done with them, and uh, we'll be aging that on tart dried cherries and uh, vanilla. Ooh. Oh yeah. man, you started salivating when he said the word <laughs> age. I mean, it's <laughs> it didn't even finish what he was <laughs> aging it in. <laughs> it's it, it dripping off my gray beard. <laughs> Oh my God! So, so you guys, we're going to get to that. Rent the rye. Mm-hmm. Are you guys re- repurposing or one-time use? Where are you guys getting your barrels for your aging pro- your products? Um, so we we get them from a, a broker in Lansdale, PA. Okay, um, and so we get we try to get rye specific ones um, when we can, and most years we can get them. Um, they're a really good broker, and so. We don't necessarily know what distillery it comes from. Sometimes, okay, you don't. So it's a broker that gets a bunch of barrels. Yeah, the one time. Uh, sometimes barrels. it'll have the brand on it. Sometimes it won't. Um, past couple of years, we usually get them from uh, Heaven Hill. Yeah, Heaven Hill. You know, they make. We've been trying to get them on. Trying to yeah. make contact with yeah. them guys. They make so. half the whiskey in <laughs> the U.S. So chances are, if you're buying one, you're getting. But um, yeah, so that's where we get this. Normally, we'll Red Rye will go for about six months. We usually make it. February, March, um, we will usually put another clean beer in it. Um, like the, the weed dame will be this year. Uh, usually the second one, um, just because of the kind of beers we do, usually they only sit for three, four months, something like that. The Jason hates it. <laughs> <laughs> and then usually those barrels will go to our sour. But so it's, okay. So the sour it's usually then it goes so to you're sour. repurposing and mm-hmm. repurposing until you're done with yep. it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bowers aren't cheap. So the more no. we can use them, the better. So, and, and, you know, to me, it, it, as a general consumer thinking of the whiskey and the bourbon industry, they only use those barrels one time. Yep. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking wood <laughs> yeah. for one barrel one time. But Damn it's straight. good that there's other industries that have found a way to repurpose that barrel yeah. and reuse it, so it's it's not going to waste. So we because, actually, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. no, go ahead. Well, we actually take those barrels one step further, and it's something that we're still kind of um, working on how to properly market it. But uh, about what was it, six or seven years ago at this point, right, or eight? Yeah. It was might have been longer than that. Uh, we started a craft malt vinegar project. Malt and, uh, vinegar. Yes. Yeah, so we take uh, certain beers. Uh, if they meet the profile, um, we will take some of it and add it to our. We we have a mother now that we, uh, like I said, I think the oldest batch of vinegar is seven or eight years old, and uh, we start it in a in a tote, and then we transfer it to barrels, and then it goes through an eight a transfer process till it gets to our final barrels, um, but. We repurpose those barrels. We also, if we have a beer that's, we don't, we don't like to put beer on the market if it's, we have a window of tolerance where if it's not going to be sold within this certain time frame, and I'm, not that we're the only people doing this, but we specifically won't sell it after a certain point. Some of those beers will get moved into the vinegar program so we can recycle it so we're not putting it back into the, or we're not putting it into the, you know, down the drain. Number one, it's a waste of profit, but it's also hard on the, you know, yeah. hard on the, the sewer system. So, um, we repurpose that into our malt vinegar. So you guys are selling this malt vinegar? Mm-hmm. Yep. Damn, I like I like vinegar. <laughs> it, it's especially my ham and green beans. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's one of my uh, one of fries. my favorite things we ever did. And that's a cool thing we've found. This this we uh, to me it comes somewhere between um, a balsamic and a malt vinegar because it's been aged. So you get Damn. it's not that sharpness of a malt vinegar. It actually does have a little bit of the sharpness of, malt, of a malt vinegar, but then it also has a a softness and a sweetness from like a balsamic. It's we'll, we'll send you a couple bottles. Well, no, we're gonna we're, we're, <laughs> like you had mentioned about the stickers and stuff. We're just gonna have to fucking come to audit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and what we might have to do a remote. I know Dave. Dave wants to come take a tour and take pictures and video of the uh, the brewing process. Hell there, yeah, man! There. Come down. Can- well, I do enjoy yeah, the canning side side yeah. of it. Yeah, I like to. I'd like to do some sort of a canning feature. Let at, us know. at some point, but um, it 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 all depends on time anymore. My time is, I'm Dude, tired. You're fucking retired. <laughs> I'm retired, and I have less time now than I. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So cooking wise, I mean, we already know you guys like to make chili. Uh, though you mentioned you do have a 
small kitchen about mm-hmm. the size of my coffee table. Yes. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Who does the cooking at the brew pub? Uh, so it's right now. Um, it was basically me for a while, <laughs> um, for many years. Uh, so we have uh, some staff that he's a great guy. He basically floats around a lot of places. He's our cook. He works at the pub. He also works in the brewery. He does a little bit of everything. So he's your man of your uh, your man of all talents. Yeah. many hats. Um, yeah. But yeah, but you know, Jason and I develop all the recipes, um, and uh, yeah, and then we just sometimes on Mondays, Jason shows up with different foods and so this is what we're having for lunch and so who cook- Monday turns into a cooking day who cooks at home you or guys or the oh, wives me. Yeah. Oh, no, me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. you guys do oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome Yep, and then my kids complain if I don't not then my, my wife I love her Kate if you're watching this you know I love you but let's be honest the kids like when I'm home to cook <laughs> oh man my son has refused to eat my wife's food. Today. And we're talking like chicken nuggets and hot dogs. I'm like, there's no way she messed this up. Just stuff in your- Is this a fucking edit section? <laughs> so what hotel are we staying at? <laughs> because we're gonna- well, he tells her. It's not like... <laughs> I burn water. <laughs> I, I can cook if the recipe's in front of me. But yeah, I'm not one just to throw stuff on a grill and, and just go for it. But No, we, we, we've, we've had different... We've had some slower times here and there. We've made sausage at the brewery. We've made our own dried meats and stuff. Oh, my God. So you we guys got it going on. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. Well, like I mean, like I said, Brian and I got started cooking. That was the thing that kind of, you know, it was the chili cook-off. And then, um, you know, we'd get together and, you know, let's try to make something, you know, make this crazy recipe. And then it just – and brewing was sort of a natural progression yeah. sort of um, from cooking – um, and I, for me, and I know Brian and I are both kind of on the sciencier end of things. Um, we uh, we both enjoy the the art and the science of brewing. Um, you know, you do have, to, and there's a re- this is why Mitch is here because uh, numbers aren't my thing, nor are they Ryan. So he's good with all the you know when you start getting into parts per million, uh, parts and per million, and, yeah, and, and all that great stuff. That's where Mitch uh, is is the man. But um, there's still that creative aspect. Um, yeah. And that st- still follows us. So, yeah, like Ryan said, well, very frequently I'll come in on a Monday and be like, I ordered this giant piece of meat. Um, I can't eat it all myself. This is what we're having for lunch, and we'll figure out how we're going to make it. And we'll, uh, That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, you've, uh, it's, it's part to help me eat this in part. Uh, we tend to share. That's one thing I will say about the brewery is we are we're a family we're uh, some people think that ryan and i are um an item but we're not we're actually married we're just we're always fighting um and uh yeah i mean we're pretty sure that most of hanover thinks that we're, we're a gay couple um um but i guess i didn't have to well, say gay but i honestly it started out with the pride I honestly, I honestly believe that that was the first time that this had been brought up on our podcast <laughs> But uh, <laughs> you guys weren't pictured on the Bud Light can. Were no, you? No, no, next year, next year, next um, year. But uh, yeah, but anyway, it, so we, we are like a big family. We tend to we do eat, eat lunch, we almost eat lunch together every yeah. every day. Um, you know, anyone if if the pub staff is there, we we kind of like kind of it, it is it is a big family. Um, you know, not to bring up it bad. I understand they're they're running into some some kickback on that oh well, yeah they are. <laughs> they're really they're they, they started to away. put the harley davidson label on the bud can so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they got some big, they got some kickback on it. Yeah. yeah yeah anyways keep your keep your political <laughs> statements away from your business is something that yeah, i stand yeah, yeah. i don't care what you Good believe idea. in what you love you, if you have a business you have employees that rely on you keep your no keep politics your no religion nope, keep it to yourself exactly. yep. yeah no politics no religion not That's necessary in business so Never discuss. Like, I don't like Canadians, but I don't talk about it a lot. I, <laughs> uh, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, what's the matter with the Canadians? Yeah. Don't eh? bring that up, I guess. <laughs> Come on. They're the sleeping giant to the north. They're just waiting to take America over. Come on. I just came back from Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> and they're starting with Molson. That's where it all starts. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we're not going to be able to see because of their fires. Yeah, they're just trying to smoke us out. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a technique the Indians used on us? Come on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> Let's drink. <laughs> Let's drink. And so... One last time, tell us where they can found all this beer. Where you guys are at? Not in Canada, obviously. <laughs> I don't think you get up into Canada. I think that border's shut now. Oh yeah, yep. that's more than a day's drive. 
<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> But yeah, so you could find us. We're we're in wholesale. Uh, we're distribution. We're from essentially from Philly to Johnstown. Um, we're down in Maryland. Our, our good friends to the south. Um, yeah, and we're yeah, in cans, bottles, kegs in Hanover, PA. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the actual get brewery, it right yes. from the tap. <laughs> you got it. Right. <laughs> yeah, right now we're at uh, Granger and Centennial in Hanover, and we'll be moving to Center Square uh, in the fall. That would be awesome. Yeah. We might have to uh, make a special date when you guys have your uh, rele- your yeah. opening date. We'll yeah, absolutely. Come up there and we'll just let do you a know. Short, absolutely. Short recording. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, we've had a great time. Um, any future things you guys got coming up, like after Labor Day? Any, any plans? Any any festivals? Music? What do you guys got going on this this fall and winter? Maybe Genesis. You can bring bring them in. <laughs> Genesis. Should, yeah. I just thought. Yeah. Well, it's, you know what? We'll often make some phone calls. Uh, yeah, I haven't talked yeah. to Phil in a while. Um, yeah. but, uh, so we're, the, really right now, the big focus is moving the brew pub. So we'll have our grand opening probably in October. Um, we, uh, we'll be celebrating nine years uh, around the same time. Um, in terms of festivals, we're doing a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we this. got lots of stuff. We're all, we're always we're busy pretty much every weekend until until Thanksgiving. That's uh, why I don't want to do this stuff. Yeah. This industry, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so as as the as we get settled into our new place, we have a huge back room in our new place. So we're going to do music, events, all kinds okay, of fun stuff back there. Awesome. Um, and then being part of the downtown, the downtown Hanover has a. a Really strong community down there of different events, you know, yeah. similar to, you know, York has First Fridays and stuff like yeah. that. Um, they got a neat thing the oh, geez, 12th of October. They call it the Brewery Olympics. So it's like four person teams. You go to all the different breweries and one yeah. will have you do a, a, a Steinhold, one mm-hmm. has you relay race with Damn, barrels. That sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. So, um, and we're going to be brewing a beer for that. Uh, the, the, we're all four breweries are collabing on that. And that'll be a neat event, and that'll kind of oh, hopefully if everything lines up, that'll be like our sneak peek weekend at our new place, and then we'll go from there. Great, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, any last words for these guys? No, just thank you. And uh, like I said earlier, this is always a beer that we've I've always gone to. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps us in business. Yeah. <laughs> David. Yeah. Quick question. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Dave, never, never, no, no question is ever quit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. One question in 17 parts. <laughs> yes. Part A, Red Nog Revival. Red, oh, the Red Rye Revival? Uh, the, yeah. The, the one we're about to drink? Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Well, so uh, this is, uh, this actually came about because uh, there was, a, you know, familiar with Boulevard? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, they had a beer, and I think it was called Rye on Rye, and I had it the first time back in 2011 or 12, and I loved it. I was like, my gosh, this is such an amazing imperial stout. It was just a fantastic beer, and then they stopped making it, and I got bitter. <laughs> I was oh, like, you yeah. got to be kidding me. <laughs> So I'm like, well, screw that. I'm making, I'm going to make my own version of this and do my own thing. And that's where the red rye came from. Yeah. Cause Boulevard is besides the bourbon County from goose Island. I bought that variety pack of Boulevard. It was their barrel age series. And it went anywhere from 11.2 to 19 and a half percent was the different beers. And that's really what kicked us down this path. So I don't know if I've had the rye on rye, but I've had some of their barrel age from Boulevard. And fucking great beer. Well, I hope this uh, can hold a flame yeah. to it. So, yeah. yeah, and this is each year we do make small changes. So each year, uh, it mostly has to do with the level of rye or the kind of rye. Maybe one year it's roasted rye. Or, one year yeah. it's crystal rye. One year it's multi, you know, malted. One year it's raw rye. So we do make little changes, um, but it's it's very you know keep it. The so base you, similar, but you got to keep coming back every year exactly. to yeah. see what the subtle exactly. difference is. Yeah. Now, what you're not going to see on camera is us drinking 2017, 2018, and 2022, and to find and for us to find the subtle differences. So maybe Kevin can put it on camera here, but <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cheers out with one, All and right. as we go off camera, we're gonna sit here and drink the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll fill you in. <laughs> in the description of what we thought gentlemen ryan jason we do appreciate you guys coming you. out um make sure you check out aldis brewing aldis <laughs> brewing in hanover 
Uh, they're at Aldis Brewing and on uh, your social media platforms and AldisBrewing.com. Make sure you check them out. Don't forget to give us a subscribe at our YouTube channel. Give us a like, share on all our social platforms, and uh, you can find us at Central PA Poor on all your podcast platforms. Make sure you check that out, and we appreciate you guys coming out there. And if you're out there, we're going to be cheersing out. So this is the Red Rye Revival. Yep. yep. So if you're out there, let's raise a glass with Jason and Ryan from Aldous Brewing and the Central PA Poor, and let's all be, be bonded, bonded by, by beer. beer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.